Hey everyone, Nick DeRobertis here teaching you financial modeling. Today, we're going to be talking about combining Excel and Python using Pandas. And this is part of our lecture series on combining Excel and Python. So we said that there are two main ways that we can um, combine Excel and Python that we're going to explore in this course. That's using Pandas and using Excel Wings. So we'll come back in the following video to explore Excel Wings. But in this video, we're going to look at the Pandas way of uh, going between Excel and Python. So this is generally a simpler integration, um, which is not does not have nearly as many features. Um, but it's very fast and has um, a very simple API that we can work with. So Pandas. We get data frames, we can do all this visualization and different analysis, and it also can go in and out of different data formats. So Excel files are one of those formats. So uh, we can take a data frame and we can output that to an Excel workbook. And we can take an Excel workbook and we can read that in to a pandas data frame. So that's pretty much the extent of the integration between the two. And for a lot of cases, this is all that you need. If you have a Python model and you just need to get some data, which is stored in an Excel spreadsheet, then this is perfect. Um, or if uh, you have an Excel model and you use Python to collect the data, maybe through web scraping or pulling from a database or APIs or something which is going to be easier to approach in Python. You just want to take that data from Python and be able to load it into your Excel model as a full worksheet. This is also a good way to go about it. Uh, but for any use case which is going to require a tidier integration, things going back and forth between Excel and Python, um, or taking individual values rather than an entire worksheet or workbook at once, then Excel Wings should be the way to go. But um, oftentimes we either have a Python or Excel model and it's easy just to transfer the data between using Pandas. So what does this actually look like? We'll look at a quick example here. So the first block here is for reading Excel files. So, um, for reading Excel files, uh, we're going to use a method of the Pandas library, read Excel. So assume you've already imported Pandas as PD, then you can do pd.readExcel and you give it the name or file path of your spreadsheet. If it's in the same folder, you can just give the name. And if it's somewhere else on your computer, then you would want to put the full file path here. And uh, this sheet name is optional. You can do that to say which specific sheet you want to get out of the workbook. And if you don't pass it, then it's just going to take the first sheet uh, out of the workbook. And it's always going to read in the entire worksheet. So if you have multiple different tables in the worksheet, that can be another reason to go to using Excel Wings. You can more flexibly grab individual things out of a worksheet Whereas Pandas is just going to read the entire worksheet as a data frame. So if you have anything other than just one table in that worksheet, then Pandas uh, is going to be picking up a lot of blank cells and things like that, and you'll have to do additional cleanup. So it's definitely easiest if you just have one tab, one table on the worksheet. And then for writing, in that case, we would already have a data frame created. And then we can use the method of that data frame to Excel to output to an Excel workbook. Um, and so there, similarly to reading, you give the uh, name or file path of the output. So if you just put a name, it's going to go in the same folder. If you put a full file path, then you can go wherever you want. And uh, you want to give the name of the sheet that we're going to output to. And the last thing we're including here is index equals false. So index in Pandas is that 
thing which goes on the left hand side of the data frame which by default is just going to be 0, 1, 2, like auto incrementing. Um, so if you do just have that 0, 1, 2, and you don't care about it, pass this index equals false. If you have actually set the index to something, so the index has meaningful values in it, then you don't want to put that index equals false, assuming you want to have that in the output as well. And... I want to definitely highlight this warning. This is very, very important. When you write to an Excel workbook using Pandas, it's going to replace whatever is there. And it's going to, whatever was there before is going to be gone. And there is no undo. This is true in general with programming. If you tell the computer to do something, it's going to do it. It's not going to ask you, are you sure you want to do this? Uh, it's only if you're using an app which has built in those kind of protections. Um, but with a programming language, it's going to do whatever you tell it to. And so if you tell it to output to a workbook, which already has your full Excel model in it, uh, you really meant to just output to one sheet of that workbook, but you accidentally output it to the entire workbook, it's just going to erase everything that you had in your model. It's going to be gone forever. Um, so be really careful about this. Make sure to back up your work. Um, and generally, uh, be really careful if you're going to try and write a sheet into an existing Excel model. Um, it's better generally to just write to a separate workbook because then uh, that workbook is always just being generated by the code and you don't really care about what's in there. It's just gonna get replaced whenever you run the code. Um, so just be careful about this. You cannot undo it once you have written it over. So you could have a very bad day if you made a mistake with this. So that's why I always, among other reasons, always recommend that people back up their work regularly. Uh, you know, you can use a, a service like, like Dropbox or something to do it automatically, or you can you know, have your own manual system of copying files. Whatever you do, just be careful when you write to Excel workbooks. And this, you know, this is the only uh, part of the course where we've actually outputted a file. Um, this is really a general caution about any time you're going to output a file uh, in any programming language, it's going to overwrite whatever is there. So um, just be careful about this. So let's go look at a quick example of how we can work with Pandas to read and write Excel files. So we'll hop over to the Jupyter Notebook here, read, write, uh, Excel Pandas, and we can see it works with a workbook called Stock Data. Um, so I'm just going to quickly open up that Stock Data uh, Excel workbook so that we can see what the contents are. And you can see it's got two worksheets here, the first sheet and the second sheet. First sheet, got Microsoft and Apple, stock prices over time. Second sheet, Amazon and Facebook, stock prices over time. So of course, first we want to import Pandas and then we can read that data into a data frame. So we read the stock data file. We didn't tell it any sheet or anything and we can see that it loaded the first sheet by default, which has Microsoft and Apple, and now we have all that and a data frame. Um, but if we want that second sheet, then we just pass the sheet name here, the second sheet, whatever the name of the sheet, and now we get the Amazon and Facebook worksheet. So now coming to outputting the data frame to an Excel file, so let's look at, let's do something with the data frame so that we know it's different. Uh, here we're just adding a column which has the string stuff in it, a custom column. And now we're going to go ahead and output this. So I'm going to run this uh, to Excel, creating new book dot XLSX. And let's take a look at what we got in the new book. 
So we can see um, that we have the data which uh, was in the data frame has now come over to the Excel worksheet. The stock uh, tickers, prices, and dates. Um, and we also have this additional column that we added. You'll also notice um, that it just put it on a sheet one. That's going to be the default sheet name. Um, and you can see that it brought over this index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 as well. So let's look at some different ways we can affect this output. Uh, so first is we can do index equals false. And then um, that is going to remove that 0, 1, 2, 3 uh, going down the side. See, now it starts right from the stock column. So this, in this case, we didn't care about that index, and so this is what we want. But still outputting to something sheet 1, um, so we can control that part as well. So here we just also pass the sheet name, and then um, we are going to have the sheet named as we put it in Python. Now we've got that coming over to our Excel workbook. Um, and the um, lab exercise on this material um, is going to be here in the slides, the last um, slide of the pandas section. And there's actually three different exercises here contained within one. So you can click on the links to go to the other exercises. Um, and this does require using some files uh, from the course site. So you can go directly to download those or you can go to the resources slide and uh, download those from here. Um, and as far as what you're required to submit for uh, to get full credit on the lab exercises, you need to do level one and level two. Level three is an optional exercise. It uses uh, the advanced material in the Jupyter Notebook. Um, so that's down here. Uh, we're not going to be covering this in detail in the course. You can look at this. Um, as an extension where we can write to multiple different sheets in the same workbook. Um, but we're not going to be covering that in detail. So that's an optional lab exercise. Only one and two are required here. And so one is pretty much reading in this uh, financials uh, workbook. And do note that this is an XLS file, the old uh, Excel format, and so similarly in your code, you'll have to have XLS, not XLSX. Uh, read the income statement sheet, and then write that out to a new workbook. Um, and then the level two, using the same initial workbook. Now we're just going to uh, output to five different workbooks um, and do that without having to write the to Excel command over and over again. So that covers the integration of Excel and Python using Pandas. Next time, we're going to come back to talk about how we can do an even more, um, more flexible integration using Excel Wings. So thanks for listening, and see you next time.